So this is another classic problem, the ratio of two random variables. The uh, problem is given the joint density function of x and y. Uh, find the density function of z. Uh, so once again, we can start with the distribution function of uh, z. Uh, so that's probability of z less than or equal to z. Uh, but z is given to be x over y is less than or equal to z. So here, uh, to bring this y here, you have to be careful because if y is positive or negative, the results are going to be different. Uh, so we can, to see what is going on, let's uh, draw this line. Okay. Uh, so remember, uh, so this is the line. Uh, let's say, <coughs> of course, you, if y is positive, then this inequality is the same as x less than or equal to y z. And if y is negative, that's this, uh, the inequality will get flipped. So that's uh, greater than y z. So that you can see from here also. So this is the line x equal to y z. So x uh, y this is x, this is y. So y positive is this region. This is where the inequality will be satisfied. And in the negative case, it is this region. So that you can. So the easiest way to do this would be uh, write this as. So write that probability as uh, probability of x over y less than or equal to z. <coughs> I'm going to intersect with uh, this with the uh, y positive and the uh, y negative. Notice that these two events are mutually exclusive. So because if you call this event to be, this event to be A, uh, this is A bar. A union A bar is the whole set. Whole set intersected with uh, any set is the set itself. So nothing has changed. Uh, so let me call this event to be B. So we have a situation where we, we, get, we have prob B union, <coughs> I'm sorry, B intersection A union A bar. A B intersection A union A bar. So this is using the distributive rule. This will be probability of uh, B, uh, B A union B A bar. But once again, B A and B A bar are also mutually exclusive. So consequently, the probability of that union is the sum of the probabilities. Probability of B A plus probability of B A bar. So I'm going to write that here. Uh, so F C C is probability of uh, <coughs> B is uh, X over Y less than or equal to Z. And A is Y positive plus X over Y less than or equal to C, Y negative. So I, I <coughs> so the, we, we took the, uh, the positive negative case and we split it up. But when, if Y is given to be positive, this Y goes here. So we can write this as, so if you want, we could write one more step here. So FCC which is probability of x over y less than or equal to z is equal to uh, so this is the same as x less than y z y positive and probability of x greater than y z when y is negative so when y is uh, positive, x is less than yc. So I have already identified this, this region. Uh, uh, so we, we, where we can integrate by taking a strip like this. Uh, so this would be y goes from 0 to infinity. And x goes from, uh, x goes from minus infinity to yz. And similarly, the other portion, you take a strip like this. 
And so y goes from minus infinity to up to this point, x goes from here to here. So y goes from minus infinity to 0, and x goes from yz to infinity. And so remember, this is FCC, so we need to take the uh, derivative of this with respect to z. So again, we can use the Leibniz rule, which is uh, here. It says if a function is an integral where the integrand uh, as well as the limits are functions of the variable, then it's a derivative with respect to x is derivative of the top limit, then substitute into the variable, the upper limit. Do the same thing on the, the lower limit with the negative sign. Then limits stay the same, take the derivative of the integrand, of course, with respect to x. So if you do that here, <coughs> notice that the inner integral, stay, outer integral stays the same. So the derivative of this quantity with respect to z. So the derivative of the top limit is y. Then substitute in the variable of integration yz dy. Derivative of the bottom limit constant, so no contribution. Derivative of the integrand with respect to z, no contribution. Uh, plus we have one more term, derivative <coughs> with respect to z. Again, outside limits are constant, so that stays as it is. Uh, here the top limit is uh, constant, so its derivative is zero. So minus the derivative of the bottom limit with respect to z, that will be y. Then in the integrand, you substitute the lower limit. So lower limit goes here. It will be yz comma y uh, dy. So notice that if you want, we can, uh, so in this region here, you have minus y, so which is the same as, which is positive here. So if you want, you can couple this together and write it like this. Absolute value of y, fx y, yz, y dy. And of course, if x and y are independent, uh, so this is, uh, if x, y independent on top of that, uh, then this formula reads minus infinity to plus infinity, absolute value of y, fx of yz <coughs> multiplied by f, y, y, dy. So as an example, let me do an example. Let's say uh, we look at uh, x and y are uh, jointly normal or normal. I uh, will do the simple case, normal with uh, zero mean and variance sigma squared and correlation coefficient zero. In other words, fx y is uh, So that's f x y. So if you if you take this problem, uh, of course z is x over y. So we want the ratio of two um, uh, Gaussian random variables. So we can substitute into this formula. So we could use uh, this. Uh, so it's minus infinity to plus infinity, absolute value of y, two pi sigma squared e raised to minus. Uh, instead of x, we are going to substitute yz, so that's yz squared plus y squared dy. Uh, so notice that uh, the whole thing is an even function of y. Uh, so this integration now becomes uh, twice the integral from 0 to infinity. In this region, it is positive, so you don't need the absolute value anymore. And uh, so this becomes 1 over 2 pi sigma squared integral 0 to infinity y e raised to minus 1 plus c squared multiplied by y squared uh, by 2 here, 2 sigma squared here. So over 2 sigma squared dy. So let me substitute 1 plus z squared multiplied by y squared over 2 sigma squared to be 
u, then we have 1 plus sigma c squared y dy over sigma squared to be du. So this integral now becomes, uh, so instead of, uh, <coughs> instead of y dy, notice that from here, y dy equals sigma squared du over 1 plus z squared. So I'm going to substitute it here. So I have 1 over 2 pi sigma squared integral 0. Limits are the same because when y is 0, u is 0, y is infinity, u is infinity. So instead of y dy, I'm going to substitute this sigma squared du over 1 plus z squared and this is e raised to minus u. So sigma squared cancels, 1 over z squared goes outside. Uh, so I have, uh, and there is a 2 here. So there is a 2 here, 2, 2 cancels. So this big, there is a 2 here. So this becomes 1 over pi 1 plus z squared integral from 0 to infinity e raised to minus u du. But this is 1. So the answer is 1 over pi 1 plus z squared. And z goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. Of course, this is the density function of a standard Cauchy random variable. So the result is, if x and y are, uh, at least the way it is written here, uh, 0 mean independent with identical variance, then the ratio z, uh, z equal to x plus over y is Cauchy with parameter 1. So the density function of Cauchy, uh, normalized Cauchy is 1 over pi multiplied by 1 plus z squared, z from minus infinity to plus infinity. So that looks like a bell-shaped curve, but it is not bell-shaped, it's just a quadratic. Uh, so this is the density function of z. And uh, z is Cauchy. This result, the Cauchy result is true, even if they are correlated uh, Gaussian, it just, uh, it, <laughs> there will be few more terms, but the, essentially the result is going to look like z minus, there will be a shift here, and these constants will be different. But essentially it's a 1 over shifted quadratic. So that's the, that, again this is a classic result. The ratio of two normal random variables is, in general you could say the ratio of two normal random variables is Cauchy.